Well, if you've ever driven by a construction site before they put down the foundation, you might wonder what all these pipes are sticking up in the air. Well, this is actually our ground plumbing, our rough end plumbing. It has to go in before we pour the concrete foundation, and it needs to go in the right spot before we pour the foundation because it's going to be hard to change afterwards. This big white pipe you see here is our sewer line, and it comes from all different parts of the house where different bathrooms, kitchen, everything is, and it all flows, gravity flows, towards the front of the house because on this particular lot, our city sewer is on the very front, so we need to flow downhill towards it. There's no pressure behind it like there is a water line, so we've got to flow downhill. They're also going to come in and install a copper water line that will run from the city water main throughout the whole house. It doesn't have to go deep in this ditch because it's not going to freeze underneath the house. Gravity's not as important on that. We just need to get it down low enough that it's not going to freeze, and that won't be a problem underneath the slab. It'll be more than warm enough. As you can see, there's a lot of rock here that we've dug up to put this line in. We're going to have a great foundation because we're going to be on solid rock, but it is hard when you're putting in your line. What's going to happen is we're going to backfill this after everything's in place and we get our inspection tomorrow. So we're going to have to go ahead and come in and put sand all around this pipe because we don't want to push this rock in and actually break this PVC pipe or else we'd have a sewer leak underneath our foundation. It's going to be very hard to fix. We'd have to jackhammer the concrete foundation, get down there, be really a mess. Also, we need to check this sewer line before we cover it up to make sure there's no leaks. So what we're going to do is put caps on everything and then add a little bit of air pressure and have it hold the air pressure for a while and make sure that none of it leaks out. If we're not leaking air, then we're not going to leak any sewer gas or any water or anything and we'll be okay. Let's go over to the other end. Now there's always a lot of plumbing going on in the bathrooms, a few things you need to watch for. Number one being called WC on your blueprints. What WC stands for is water closet. What it really is is a toilet. This is going to be your toilet, the big drain right here. This is going to be the water in the back to come up and refill the tank that sits right above the toilet. Now this is known as a vent stack. The reason you have this is anywhere that you have water draining, it creates a vacuum. Something needs to fill in behind that water. What it fills in with is air. This vent stack will run all the way up through this wall. It'll go through our attic and out through the top of the roof. It'll have a cover on it so rain won't come down in it. But anytime we flush the toilet or we drain water down a shower or a bathtub or a sink, it's got to fill with air, so it'll pull air down through there. If you live in an older home and you flush your toilet, it sounds like a jet engine taking off and makes a lot of noise. Probably this is crimped somewhere up top. The cover's crimped around it or a bird has built a nest in it or something. It's got clogged up. It's having a hard time pulling air, so the water's having a hard time going down the pipe. Get someone up there, open that up, get the clogs out. The toilet will flush a lot easier or your sink will drain a lot better. Across the bathroom here, we have where our bathtub will go. And this is going to be the drain for our bathtub. It's got a little P-trap on the bottom so we don't let any gas back up through the sewer into there. The P-trap will hold water down in the bottom. The water will never go all the way over, so that way no gas will come back up into like our bathroom smell. Got to have that. You got to have a way to vent that. So again, we got our vent over here in our exterior wall. to run down this direction. These are our copper water lines coming in. The one with the red cover is hot. The one with the blue cover is cold. And the reason you wrap it is wherever it's going to touch the foundation or the concrete, the chemical reaction could go off and eat holes through the copper. So we want to go ahead and wrap it in plastic. Over here we have what's known as a clean out. If you ever get a clog somewhere in your sewer line, you've got to stick a snake, it's called. It's a cable down in there and get that clog broken up. Now one way to do it is climb up on the roof and stick the snake all the way down your vent stack. But this roof is going to be really high, so over here we have a clean out that will actually stick out of the exterior wall. So you can just come up to the outside, pull that off, stick your snake down in there, and clean out any of your clogs. Actually they did this all the way around the home. Anywhere they have a vent stack on the exterior wall, they went ahead and put a clean out there. The kitchen is fairly similar, but there's a few little things you should be watching for. Let's go take a look over there. Now our kitchen setup is very similar to the bathrooms, but a few little things we have to change because this kitchen has an island with a sink in the middle of it. So we've got to get our lines over to the sink in the island and we don't have a wall that we can go up and down. We're going to have our island here, our sink will be right here, we'll have a connection going into this pipe. But again, we can't create a vacuum, we need to give it a way to breathe. So we've got this vent behind it and we've actually got a loop here. They're actually connected up top and they're connected at the bottom. So. Our sewer water will drain straight down, go into our pipe, run back out to the front of the house. We're going to catch air through this vent pipe. Now since it's not going straight up, we have to actually run it back to a wall. So you can see down here we're connected to it. It runs across. And this is a wall between our garage and our kitchen. And here's our vent stack. Just like in the bathroom, it'll run all the way straight up and go out the roof of the house. Next to it here, this three inch pipe, 
is not part of the vent system. This is a separate drain pipe. It's running up the wall to catch a bathroom upstairs. Now, it's very important that you pick out things like this before you build the house, before you pour that concrete foundation, because again, it's gonna to be too expensive to come back and add it later. If you go with the pier and beam foundation where you have wooden trusses across, instead of concrete, you can come back and make some changes and add a few things as long as you can make it drain. You're gonna save a lot of money either way if you do it right before you ever start. Well, today we're working on one of the most important parts of your home, actually the backbone of your home. It's the foundation. You gotta get this part right because if you don't, the rest of the home will never be right. Things won't be level, doors won't open and close, your sheetrock's gonna crack. You've gotta get this part just perfect. You guys are out here, as you can tell, pouring concrete. And let's start right there. It's concrete, it is not cement. Cement is an ingredient of concrete. Concrete is cement, water, sand, and gravel. We've got all that here. The guys have a big area to cover also, as you can see. This home is 6,000 square feet. That's about 150 yards of concrete, so about 17, 18, 19 trucks loads out here. You can't reach it by just backing a truck up and putting the chute down. So we've actually got a pump truck here. This is a pump truck behind me, and the guys actually dump the concrete into the back end of the truck. It goes up through the tube and out through the bottom. They just move that tube wherever they're gonna need the concrete throughout the foundation. So that way we can get a good, even surface. If we were just dumping it from the side on a foundation this big and trying to pull it out there with the come along, they're going to have a lot of problems. We wouldn't get it level. But as you can see like this, you can dump the concrete anywhere that you need it so you can have a good quality job. That's what's going to be most important. It's got to be right today. We can't come back later and work on this or fix it. You got to do it right today. This has got what's called about a five inch slump. That means if you poured it in a pile, it would stand about five inches tall before it would start to fall down. We want about a five inch slump on most foundations. That's gonna give us a good strong foundation. Now, concrete has a couple of properties. One is that it gets harder every day of its life because there's chemical reactions going off. The second is it's gonna crack. Sometime in its life, it is gonna crack, even this big foundation. So what do we do to prevent that from being a problem? We're putting in these cables. These are called post-tension cables. You see this red sheathing here. It actually has an anchor on the other end in the beam of the concrete, and it comes all the way across, and it actually protrudes outside of our form boards here for our foundation. This steel part here is actually what's inside this red plastic sheathing. The sheathing is protection, so the concrete doesn't hurt the steel cable. But we're gonna come back later and put a ram on that, and we're actually gonna pull that cable to put tension on this foundation, actually pull the concrete tighter. That'll make the concrete stronger, foundation stronger. And then when the concrete does crack sometime, it can't move side to side, it can't move apart, it can't move up and down because you've got all these cables pulling it together from every direction. So we're gonna have one solid foundation, which is really what we want for our home. Well, as you can see, the home is now underway. It's been exactly seven days and our concrete's hardened up enough that we can go ahead and stress it and put tension on our cables. First thing we need to do though is remove this plastic that's here on the cable, put some wedges in so the cable won't back in. So Bobby from Post Tension and Steel is here to get the job started. We'll pull the black piece off, then stick some wedges down both sides. Little pieces of metal, but it will keep the cable from backing back into the foundation. You gotta have it or else there's no way to hold the cable in place once they put tension on. Now you're probably wondering how much does the cable actually move? Well, the cable moves about one inch for every 12 feet. This is about 45 feet across, so we're gonna have approximately three and a half inches of movement once we actually put tension on there. But we need to know for sure that we did do that, so we're gonna take a two by four and set it against our foundation. We'll set it on a nail and on the cable and just put a little bit of paint there. That's gonna give us our marking point. We just use the two by four to get a straight edge. Okay, there we go. Do it on this one as well. Now I'll get out of the way and Bobby will come in and put some tension on it. Now you can actually see the hydraulics moving the cable out of the foundation. You can see the first glimpse of our paint there. So you can see we already pulled it a couple inches. And the engineer designed this one to cut off at 5,500 pounds on the gauge. 5,500 pounds on the gauge means that we're gonna have about 29,000 pounds of pressure on that cable. And that's a lot of tension squeezing that concrete together. So we'll have a good, strong foundation. Pulling the second cable here. There's 66 cables in this foundation. We've got to go pull every single one of them. 
So Bobby will spend about an hour to get them all exactly where he wants them. And we're there. So now it comes time to measure to make sure that we did pull it far enough and that our gauge wasn't lying to us. Take a tape measure, put our block on there. We'll look from our block to there, three and a half inches. You can see it's three and a half inches to the paint, which is exactly what the engineer designed this for. Now we've got to do all 66 cables around here, but once we're done, we're going to have one solid piece of concrete with tension from all directions pulling towards the center, which will make the concrete stronger, which means a better home for you. No matter how much the ground moves, one foundation.